sickly episode of this show. <laughs> there might there might be some coughing in this one. Oh no. A little uh <laughs> some too god it hurts to laugh too. <laughs> it's one of those lingering coughs. I my voice isn't even lost anymore like it was uh uh when I reviewed Shaft. The when I did the snob episode of Shaft, my voice is lost in it. Mm. And I recorded that like a week ago. I recorded it before the convention. So my voice sounds fine now. It's just this. I just got this lingering. I mean, thing I wouldn't going necessarily on. call it fine, but I mean, you're oh you, it, compared <laughs> com, yeah, compared to not having a voice at all. I guess that does. yeah. I guess I do maybe sound a little nasally. I can like hear feel some cloggage up in here, like as well. Um, it's not even from the convention. No, this was this this was here before the convention. You just gave it to everybody else. At the oh yeah, the they're all. Oh, yeah, half, half of them are dead. I got another con coming up in a couple weeks, <laughs> so I'll, I'll promote that here in a second. Uh, I'm Brad Jones here with Brian Irving uh, uh, to get some of the, uh, all right, to get some of the cleaning house out of the way first. Here we go. Uh, subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash stoned gremlin productions. Also follow us on Twitter at the cinema snob, Instagram at the cinema snob as well. We got... Three movies here for you tonight. The Weekends, Big Movies, Men in Black, International, as well as, speaking of Shaft, uh, the new Shaft that's coming out. And this uh, came here to Springfield this weekend. I know it had like a... Surprisingly. Well, it had an advanced screening a few weeks ago, but I... Yeah, I... I, Maybe it wasn't in Springfield that it had the advanced screening, but I it, it was a weekend I was gone, so I wasn't able to. Plus, give a watch to the Cinema Snob episode on the 1971 Shaft that's up now. Plus, if you are subscribed to our Patreon, uh, since I'm going to be... Laura and I are going out of town this weekend, so I put up some stuff in advance. We've got the Cinema Snob episode on the 1988 Child's Play is up on our Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash the cinema snob and we do have a convention coming up in a couple weeks in bettendorf iowa june 21st through june 23rd that's for planet fuck cod so come see us we'll be there all weekend with all of our dvds we've also got the uh gofundme page still going on for post-production on the movie it's it's a little bit this is just the last image i used for last time we did the show it's a little bit above that right now i think it might be at about 3500 right about now. i think i think announcing that lloyd kaufman was gonna play your dad kind of or yeah I mean, yeah it's it just kind of like you know oh that was that, that was so much fun <laughs> that was a dream man like it, it totally was uh and i want to promote this as well but i might have to uh uh how do i even word this okay well we do have uh exclusive episodes up on another site uncut episodes uh some episodes from the past that are now uncensored it rhymes with corn rub i I was thinking the same thing (laughs) i go like it rhymes with smorn hub check us out on there Uh, that's at the cinema snob uncut plus uh, oh, well, <laughs> I clicked on the wrong thing. Uh, pl- episodes that we have going on over there. For we, There's an uncut version of the Geek episode. Also, uh, the e- one of the E.T. episodes. Oh, yeah. Bat Pussy is over there. The uncut episode of that. Uh, Rights of Uranus is over there. So I'm going to be keeping that pretty pretty active. So go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and subscribe to us and check us out over there. <laughs> Somehow that ET review is even worse with the porn back added back into it. It's like no, no, oh. This I just remember is so, uh, when I first saw that movie. It was, it was at one of my birthdays, uh, and it, it had just been sent to me, uh, and I remember we put it on, and I remember thinking like Ugh. I was a little drunk, and I remember thinking like, God, I'm actually getting kind of nauseous watching this. Ew. <laughs> Now that I've seen like 200 movies like it since then, I was editing the footage for the uncut episode over there, and I'm like, yeah, this seems about yeah, normal for me now. That, this is not bad anymore, I guess, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so God. to get into uh, practically the same movie as E.T. the Porno, <laughs> let's, let's take a look at a clip we got right here of uh, Men in Black International, and we'll be right back with the review.
Well, <laughs> maybe that's 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 just the clip right there. <laughs> okay, I know I loaded it in here. That's earlier. all you guys need. To ah, see there it. we go. I got. I've been so sick and distracted earlier. I didn't load it. I didn't load the trailers in the right order. They're down at the very bottom. I'll have to remember that for Shaft and Late Night. Here is a clip right now from uh, Men in Black International. Are you a queen? Well, I mean, to the extent that all women are, yes. But no, no. I pledge loyalty eternal to you, Agent M. No, no, no. I'm not interested in a subject. Too late. It's done. I already pledged the loyalty. I wish you'd said no, no, no before. Huh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling very good. Like, I'm on some Dayquil, some ibuprofen. I got my Powerade here. I got my cough drops. So, so there's my I'm cough drops. Out. I got my cough <laughs> drops. I'm, like, medicated, man. I totally am. So, I don't even want to... Part of me doesn't even want to, like, just tease it. Be like, well, let's start out with what's good. Like, no, nah, I'm just going to come out and say I didn't like this movie at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like you, you had a little bit more vitriolic reaction than I did, too. It's like, I was just like, eh, it's I, not necessary. No, I actually completely agree with you. Like, because vitriolic, not really, because well, it's not like... Not. It's it's, not, I guess it's not Transformers. That's, no, yeah, it's that's not Transformers true. 3 or anything like that. Like, it's a movie that, like, whatever annoyance... I have at the movie is is for the reason that you just said, honestly. I sat there, this whole movie thinking this is just a product this is this it this is just a yeah. soulless unambitious product of a movie it just feels like such a studio note made by committee film it feels like the kind of movie you make when you're just keeping the rights to something you know what i mean like so any yeah yeah like amazing spider-man <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that i liked better than this um uh. Did you? What did you? If you had to pick I, between the two, between this and Amazing Spider-Man, yeah. I don't know. I would go with Amazing Spider-Man over See, this. See, I, I can't stand Amazing Spider-Man. Right. I, I really have never enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I. There were at least entertaining parts in this movie where I was like, okay, I got to chuckle out of it, sure. but it was never like. And I don't like. I saw that Sonnenfeld was an executive producer on it. Like, at least accredited. Uh, yeah. So it makes me wonder what kind of involvement they gave him in this. Or they're just like, we're just going to slap your name on it. Yeah. And name recognition only because... I guarantee that's what it is. Like, even with, like, Men in Black 2, which wasn't really that good, at least... Right. I mean, the chemistry between Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones was always there. And, it, uh -huh. you know, and it carried those first three movies. Yeah. And I think, I mean, the chemistry between Tessa Thompson and chris hemsworth at this point i mean they've got it down to a t uh, but it just feels like it's just it was it felt more natural and genuine in like thor ragnarok than it does uh, here this almost yeah. feels like this is more of a well we know what worked last time so we're gonna at least we can do part we you know we can get to that point pretty easily but they didn't really try and sell it as much i think as you hit it right on the head, because with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, you would go to a movie just for that alone. Like it, Now, you know, the first Men in Black I liked a lot. Second, not so much. The third one I enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, so maybe they're going to this Star Trek thing, where it's like the odd the ones odd and then the even ones. Yeah. Like, But like, so, but with Tommy Lee Jones, like the first Men in Black felt very original going to see it when it came out back then. Yeah. And the casting had something to do with that too because you have two actors who you wouldn't really necessarily expect to be in this kind of buddy sci-fi alien comedy movie right. together and two actors alone will smith and tommy lee jones both actors who just ignite the screen like yeah. they come off the who, screen with how entertaining who, they who are at that point had both been box office draws Certainly. in their own respective rights and then came together you know with this it's like Okay, yeah, uh, these two, yeah, I've seen this before. I saw it in Ragnarok. Like, it's, I've, it I've seen better in Ragnarok. Yeah, and it's, yeah, and it was better in Thor Ragnarok. They had yeah. better chemistry in that film. Yeah. This one, not really. Like, and it, it's frustrating because, like, I could, it's, it's not even, it's weird because I'm like, it's not that I think that this is necessarily a badly cast movie because some of the yeah. actors I had that are in it, 
I could see work. I would almost like to see some of it switched in a way because like, what if Chris Hemsworth is partnered with Emma Tom uh, with uh, Emma Thompson in this film? Okay. Or what if Tessa uh, Tessa Thompson is partnered with Liam Neeson in the movie? What if there was that that okay. like that kind of dynamic? I would be like, okay. That's kind of original. Like, that I would like to see. Whereas the way they got it here, oh, okay, you threw these two on here. All right, fine, whatever. And, and I think maybe by trying to avoid a pitfall, they dropped into another one. Because I'm guessing they probably didn't want to recreate the young cat, younger cast paired with the older sure. cast member vibe from the first three movies. I would, um, I would be fine with recreating that because they recreate... So much other stuff in this movie that doesn't work. The casting, that I wouldn't necessarily mind if they... Or I would at least like it better than what they're given here. Because the way, the way that they try recreating a lot of things in this movie is down to even how some things with the plot is structured. Where you have uh, Tessa Thompson, who's like the rookie, who comes in like Will Smith, whereas... In the first Men in Black, he's like, he's a really good cop and then is brought into this force and he's the rookie in there. Tessa Thompson kind of figures out where the base is, infiltrates it, and again, they make her a rookie. They put her on probation. In the first movie, that certainly works because Will Smith is your avatar and for the audience who, along with him, you're really discovering the ins and outs of this world and how it goes, whereas in this... They're doing that again, but I've seen it three times already. <laughs> True. I don't think they... But they never really... It's not a real long set piece. You know, it's... it's no. just there just so you show, okay, she made it. Like, like it jumps real quick from her getting there to, yeah. to trying on the suit, getting her gun, and then looking at her test scores and finally being like, okay, fine, you can be on a probationary period uh -huh. as an agent. So, I mean, it wasn't really like it was a huge thing but i think it was more just i don't know i think at this point because you're what was when was the last minute when was men in black three 2012 okay so i guess that's not been that long but i, I said yeah. i've never seen it with you but i, I, never, like, I know we, we see so many movies I, I know we've reviewed it yeah but i just didn't remember when at this mm -hmm. point um so i mean maybe they're just trying to pull the like the younger audience, so they're trying to kind of. That's totally what it you is. You know, because you're talking at this point. What was it? Twenty two years since ninety seven. Ninety seven. Yeah. I think he has the first Men in Black. So you're talking about a generation that probably either really didn't watch it, or yeah. they're young enough to where, you know, just kind of a refresher works. Um, uh, especially with new a new cast member, like it's it's every like reboot or re-sequel that they do uh, there's always that initial you know get suited up type moment and it's you know and it's it's probably not necessary right but it's it was it was just so many things that i had just seen better before and with more creativity to it than this one is yeah. doing even even the synopsis of this movie alone, the fact that it's called Men in Black International, so she's going to London, this could have taken place anywhere. Yeah. Like, this... You have Chris Hemsworth right there. You could kind of do something cool with almost making this sort of like a James Bond version of Men in Black, and they don't. Like, every part of this plot could have taken place anywhere. Like, it really wasn't wholly dependent on this being international, especially since both... The bases that they go to look just the same. It's yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, there's weird creatures in the background here. There's weird creatures in the background there. Um, like, I almost think it, like, if you really wanted to switch something up, make it intergalactic, not international. You know, yeah. instead of being on Earth, now we've got posts all over, and now you're going to different oh, planets. Oh, sure. You know, change mm -hmm. up the set pieces, change up you know change up the stakes it's gonna, it's gonna take a really talented writer to not make it feel too much like guardians of the galaxy <laughs> true but i mean we're already talking about a movie about aliens so it's kind of like i know what, what yeah <laughs> and i think you can get a little bit of leeway with men in black at least film wise because it was 
as a franchise started before you know the MCU, so it gets a little yeah. bit of leeway maybe. But yeah, there would definitely be some calls of you know copying and whatnot. Like apparently, like Dark Phoenix, just so oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just <laughs> something really like anything because this movie it just felt so by the numbers. It felt so oh, even yeah. in terms of its plot like from the tra- when i saw the trailer of this movie i i was sitting there going that person's gonna turn out to be the bad guy and i was right and it's and telegraphed from hard the like yeah it's just like you're, you're just waiting for it like okay are we are we gonna get this yeah well it's the most yeah it's like you know that's gonna happen they also set up with the most obvious red herring that they possibly could have in this movie i'm like yeah. i know it's not him i know it's gonna be this person and sure enough, it's one of those movies where I'm just kind of waiting for that to happen. Even the rules that it kind of sets up, like, yeah, they do a lot of jokes, of course, with the uh, Neuralizer, but does that even matter at this point? Because they are doing stuff like, they're, they're doing <laughs> stuff like flying this jet ski all over uh, wherever that this is taking yeah. place right here. Through this town, like, I, I know there was a lot of big stuff going on in the other movies, but... Even the other movies kind of tried to make up for it. Even the second one, when it ended with the Statue of Liberty being the giant Neuralizer, that's dumb, it, especially if you think about it for longer than five seconds, but at least that tried. <laughs> it tried to have an explanation. <laughs> this, I I wasn't... All of that, I would, I would be... I would sit there and be like, totally fine with, if I was at least laughing through this movie, and I never really was... Uh, yeah. Did you get did you get many laughs out of this film? I I kind of got laughs out of Pawnee, the little Kumail Nanjiani. Oh. It was he's ridiculous. Uh huh. Um, but at least I'm like it was his his quips, especially at Hemsworth expense, were were, were pretty good. Uh-huh. There were some really good ones in there. I mean, other than that. I felt like it kind of almost seemed like he was the only one that was, he got the script and he was like, ooh, I'm actually going to try and actually do this to an extent. It seemed like he was doing a lot of ad-libbing. Um, Probably. It kind of came across that way. Uh, I didn't care much for that. Like, it was, and I like him. Don't worry, yeah. I, I do like him a lot. Kamal uh, Nanjiani. This character, man. This was just one of those characters where I was like, this character doesn't need to be here. This no, ca- the no, only reason this character is here is for it's, toys and just uh, yeah. to provide this like I didn't even like a lot of his riffing cuz it was a lot of like it was a lot of stuff I don't like where it's like I'm not really telling any jokes right here. I'm just kind of being quirky and weird and you know, I'm just going to ramble a lot and say weird things and comedy like uh it was <laughs> maybe by this point in the movie I was already kind of annoyed, but I I couldn't get into that at all. But I mean, yeah, I mean, because that is what probably at least halfway through the movie, if not longer, when he starts really. Once he's in this movie, yeah. he doesn't leave. No, no he doesn't. <laughs> it's like they wanted. Oh, well, this was kind of. It, it's like they wanted this movie's own version of the pug dog. Yeah. It's speaking of. Uh, it's like this poster's a lie. <laughs> I mean, he's in it for like two seconds. <laughs> he's, yeah. Was he wearing the suit when he was in his cameo? No, I think he was I, just sitting on a bed next to the guard. I pulled this up in. Uh, so I. I I pulled this up in the thing, but then I didn't notice it at first until I until I uh, was programming the show earlier. I was like, "Oh well, I, well, yeah, this does look like it's maybe like a Chinese poster. Maybe yeah. he's in it more over there." But no, even in the regular poster, he's right there in the eye. <laughs> I guess it makes it like Emma Thompson's in this movie like barely longer than the dog is. <laughs> she just kind of comes in and out of this film. I feel like the only reason Excuse she was me. in this was just a continuation from three, though. I mean, was she in three? Yeah, she. Was, oh, she yeah. was. Yeah. Man, I man, I forgot. <laughs> and I liked three. I completely forgot yeah, she, she was in that. She was the head of the New York brands, I think, in three too. If I remember was correctly, she? I think so. Uh, they didn't get a uh, Rip Torn back for three. Or? Mm-hmm. Well. well. I have to look Man, that's <laughs> that been a while since I saw. It. I only saw three the one time. It was when I saw it in the theater, which is the case for most movies wow. made after 2011. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 
yeah, man, like the movie, I just didn't dig this movie. It wasn't any kind of frustration or annoyance that I had with it was just how much the whole thing is just a wasted opportunity, a wasted opportunity to really spark new interest in this series or new ideas and they don't really do any of it It, it's just sort of here's chris hemsworth and tessa thompson the end (laughs) that and my thought was they got into it saw how well it worked for thor ragnarok and just yeah was like go to town and completely missed the reasons that the chemistry in thor ragnarok was good as, you know, whereas this was like, no, it's the overall as a movie, you know, that brought something to the table that wasn't there before. And this was just paint by numbers. Yeah. You know, men in black with two different people. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, and I was, I didn't love Ragnarok as much as a lot of other people did, but it was, the chemistry was better than that. That movie had more, ide- better, that movie had more ideas in it than this movie did. Yeah. That movie was trying different things way more than this film. This is just this made-by-committee summer movie that's just put out there with really no desire. Just kind of, we've got this property. Here's these young actors. Let's do this how, how thing can we, with. How, how can we make this movie and put it out there? <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah. I So, it, yeah. even though I wasn't sitting there, like, uh, mad, really, like, I'm frustrated, sure, and, and maybe a little annoyed, but it was such an in-one-ear and out-the-other film that, like, I guess, uh, I don't know, like, it... It's, it's even hard for me to even recommend this as a rental, but it's like, I've seen worse this year... I've seen movies that made me angry or like this. If I did a bottom 20, I don't know if this movie would necessarily be on it. If I did the most forgettable films of the year, like, yeah, this, this, this would <laughs> probably be ones. near there somewhere. What, I mean, what about you? Would you uh, recommend this at all? I think, I mean, as a franchise, watch it. If you like the other ones, just to kind of, get an idea of i I don't know if this is what they want to do going forward or but at least you'll kind of know where they're at right now yeah (laughs) as opposed to you know where they were seven years ago (laughs) Um, there was one part you remember the part where it showed the painting with will smith and uh tommy lee jones like yeah their cameo in this is like they're in a a painting painting on the wall fighting Uh, fighting, uh the roach yeah, yeah yeah I was looking at that going like, oh, you're right, I would so much rather be watching this movie. I would so much rather be watching that film than the one I'm watching right now. <laughs> Even like when it starts out with uh, Hemsworth and Liam Neeson fighting this hive, I would like to see the movie that led up to that between Liam Neeson and Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Because they, they're saying all this stuff throughout the movie about how... Chris Hemsworth's character has changed how he's not the person he used to be. I'm sitting there going, well, I don't know this guy. I'm yeah. going to have to take your word on that. We, we, we know him. We've known him through what, what was it? Five minutes of, yeah. Of this scene that sets up, sets up the rest of the movie. And it's just like, well, that doesn't really tell us a goddamn thing. The villains in this movie are just like, they, they have these villains in the movie where, of course, like, they can turn human. That way they don't have to spend a lot on the makeup budget for these characters. <laughs> like, I don't know. They're just kind of nothing villains. They show up and they, like, oh, there's one gruesome death scene in the movie where they, like, melt this person. <laughs> but then they, like, break dance later, like, cuz, I don't, I don't know, man. This because they're Because they're actually international. That's what they do in real life. Yeah. So they... That's like, oh, well, we're oh, the actors. The actors oh, actors. Yeah, they're okay. actually, yeah, the gotcha. twins. Yeah. <laughs> they actually, that's something they do in real life. So they're like, oh, we'll work that in there somehow then. And it, it feels very forced because there's really no reason for that. Dude, like, you know what this movie reminded me of? More than Men in Black. Even though, like, yeah, it's got the same, like, kind of credits in it. And the music, the, the music is the same. The theme's the right. same. This movie reminded me more so of something that's, like, in the same universe as Zoolander 2. 
like because they're kind of shot the same a lot of like aerial stuff with boats and this organization and uh, even like the the costumes with the aliens look like i could be just watching a show from that movie it's about as unnecessary as that damn movie <laughs> both movies yeah. felt the same that movie was probably worse than this one. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> Shit. Zoolander 2 was a worse movie than this. Oh, yeah. But, ah, all right, let's uh, go to, so we got some super chat questions in here. So, uh, yeah, we answer these between the reviews. So, please, uh, thank you for the ones that we got in here uh, so far. Let me pop the back up here. So, yeah, let's read some uh, super chat here. Xander L. says... Hey Brad, big fan of yours for a while. What, uh, was wondering what your favorite movie of 2019 is so far. I'd assume Us or Ma. Well, it's not not I I love those movies. I I did. I, I love the hell out of Ma and Us. I, I, I really dug the hell out of. They're, they're not the best movie I've seen this year, but they're they're pretty awesome. Best. Uh, Gloria Bell, maybe that was really damn good. Uh, the Julianne Moore movie. Okay. Did you get to see, see that? Mm -mm. Check that out if you get a chance. That might be it's. If it's not my number one so far, it's up there. It's it's way the hell up there. Other than that, I'm not sure. I need I need my list in front of me. Right. Um, uh, what about you? Oh, jeez, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I was, I really liked Endgame. Like I know that's sure. very cliche to say, but. Yeah. Like, I thought that was a real good culmination of what they were building. You know, and it, it would have been something that would have been so easy just to fall flat yeah. based on how much they'd been building. Mm -hmm. But they actually did a really good job of, you know, figuring out how they were going to go with it and made mm -hmm. it work. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Shit. Um, you, know, you know what I really like, and I, and I hate that I like it as much as I do... Detective Pikachu. Oh, I liked it. I yeah. I really, really liked it, and mm -hmm. I and it was it, I I after the movie I was done I was done again. I'm like that was a lot better than had any right to be. Sure, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I had a good time with that one. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's one that yeah. really st still sticks out to me. Mm -hmm. Just it was even though it's a you know it's an already existing IP, the idea and the execution behind it was was an original thought mm -hmm. and they did i mean it was good i like seeing things that are you know original more original thoughts than just you know the same old stuff so it was uh, definitely it was weird yeah but i enjoyed what they did and i enjoyed that they actually had fun with it mm -hmm. so i mean that was as far as existing properties go i mean it's no ugly dolls <laughs> <laughs> am i kidding <laughs> uh but i mm, that's the one that really, like, those two really stick out mm -hmm. for me the most. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, I'll like. have to look at my, yeah, they do, like I do at the end of every year where I just kind of pull my list up of all the stuff I saw. Um, uh, I like the best of enemies. Did we just go offline? Uh-oh. No? I, um, I did it. Draw. Oh, no. Let's look and see what we got here. Losing, Losing frames. frames. Oh. It is raining outside. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, if we continue, if it continues to go bad, we can just pre-record the rest, and I can attach it together. Um, oh, okay. There, man. <laughs> I looked over and was like, "Oh no!" It said stream ended. Uh, That's not good. Thank you, uh, Stephen Valema. Th th thank you so much for that awesome uh, uh, contribution to the super chat. I. I will take that contribution and buy all of the cold <laughs> medication. He's gonna get, get well soon, Brad. <laughs> Troy Thomas, thank you. Uh, Aaron Foster, I'm at Bob Evans on South Dirksen if you want to eat there after the stream. My treat. I am going straight to bed after this, <laughs> but thanks anyway. Uh... Um, it's fine if not. I just wanted to show you some appreciation for the entertainment you've given me over the years. Normally I would, but I'm... Obviously, he's going he's to die soon. Feeling yeah. like crap. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so we can still kind of continue this and just see how it goes. Okay, well it's green again. Thank God. 
<laughs> oh my Dang. god, I need all the frames to talk about Shaft. Um, let's speaking, not get yeah. shafted when we're talking about Shaft. Right? <laughs> uh, let's uh, go ahead and... What, what is this now? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, oh, no. They've infiltrated the stream. <laughs> Well, they think they're all good in there for the spam, so that's all that ca- that's that's all that really matters. Let's go ahead and take a look at a clip real quick here of Shaft, and I'll be back with that review because Shaft and Late Night I saw. You didn't get a chance to see right. those. I saw Shaft and Late Night, so I'll be back with those here in a sec. You can't beat up a woman. Why not? Because she's a woman. That's like misogynistic. You the one being misogynistic. I ain't mentioned her gender. Okay. I'm an equal opportunity ass whooper. <laughs> Honestly, before I do, before I want to get into talking about this movie, I, I do want to promote my snob episode on the first Shaft again. Cause Shaft. We'll be fine. Though. Okay, there it is. I do want to promote this again because this episode bombed hard. <laughs> I like the episode. I thought it turned out... I, I had a lot of fun doing that. But, like... <coughs> dude, the Zodiac Killer episode I did a couple weeks ago performed better than this one. I was like, oh, the new Shaft movie's coming out. I should do the original. That should do fine. Turns out this movie performed, like, the lowest so far this year. Like, this this episode performed, like, uh, one of the old 50s rock and roll movies I did last September. <laughs> like, oh, well, maybe, like, maybe not a lot of people know that this reboot is coming out. <laughs> I, um, I was gonna say speaking of unnecessary sequels <laughs> honestly i'm glad when i saw that this was coming out i was honestly glad because i always thought they should have done more after the samuel jackson one and well they did a second one but it was re- it wasn't really late after the first one the Samuel Jackson yeah. one? No, I it was they, just the John Singleton one. No, I thought they did another one. There maybe, was, it, maybe besides this one. Well, the Sam Jackson one, it's not great, but it's it's fine. Uh, it, it was a hit, but I think they might have run into some rights issues or something like that. Like, there was some kind of reason for their not being one until 19 years later we have, we have this film. And I like... Uh, I like the idea of this movie a lot. I like that it's these three generations of shafts with Samuel L's dad, of course, being Richard Roundtree from the original. I like that the third guy is not cool at all. Okay. Have you seen the trailer for this film? Yeah, I have, yeah. I like that about this movie, that it's he comes to his dad because he needs help uh, the, the son works for the is an analyst for the FBI, and he comes to his dad, who he's estranged from. He comes to Samuel Jackson and wants him to help out because a friend of his was found OD'd, and he thinks it was murder and not oh, an actual overdose because he said his friend is clean. I like that it's kind of the movie is really doing this uh, clashing of generations okay. where you have the older Shaft being. Um, being much more uh, vulgar, uh, very seventies certainly. Sexist, like you know, yeah, sexist. yeah. He's the stuff. The stuff that the SJWs would be like. What yeah. Are you doing right now? <laughs> um. Yeah. So you have like him of that of, of that of that character who's very he's very politically incorrect. He's very you know he goes out gets laid very he's very vulgar. He has no problem saying whatever he wants. And then you have. The younger one, who is hypersensitive, who doesn't have a whole lot of real-world experience necessarily. He's not cool. He's not smooth. He's not his dad, and he's not his grandfather either. I I enjoy that dynamic there. I'm like, that's interesting. So so you're saying this movie was more Men in Black than Men in Black was? (laughs) (laughs) I, uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> probably liked it better like i mean at least in the sense like this movie has better ideas to it right. than than men in black does <laughs> well the uh, i do like that the thumbnail i have for this episode is like all of them are in sunglasses except mindy kaling in the very back <laughs> hey guys how's it going i guess i could have like photoshopped some on her or something or found one um so it was fun seeing that about the movie and i mean you hit on something a second ago where if you look at a lot of negative reviews of the movie they are harping on a lot of things samuel jackson is doing in this film like 
uh, I, I don't know. I, I just took like a giant, not even saying that this movie is great or bad, but I mean, I just took one glance earlier and it was a lot of like, this movie is just promoting toxic masculinity. I'm like, it's, it's, That's Shaft kind- is a masculine character. Get over it. Like, <laughs> this is kind of the point geez- of the movie. <laughs> Jesus! If, if you don't have <laughs> some sort of conflict there, then that's really, you know, you're missing the point, so. That's how I like my black exploitation. Good and safe. Like, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. So, anyway, while, while there's a lot of that I like about the movie, the execution of it's not great. Like, there's things in it that work, Certainly, like, because right. it's it's great seeing Samuel Jackson back playing this. It's great seeing Richard Roundtree back. Certainly, um, while in theory, I I like the story of this movie. I I, I do. Uh, it's with the younger character in particular. It's a little damn much, because really that is all this character is. That is all uh, Jesse Usher. I think is his name. All this character is, is to just be this complaining wet blanket through the film. You'll have Samuel Jackson say something like, uh, very Shaft, very Samuel Jackson. You'll have Samuel Jackson say something curt or vulgar or offensive. And then that'll be followed up with Shaft Jr. saying, like, you shouldn't say that. That's offensive. Like, constantly over and over again to where it's a really two-dimensional character like it it feels like you are watching just this wet blanket video essayist live tweeting this movie it's obnoxious it's so like okay that was not necessary (laughs) yeah that is this character through the film it's like Uh... man like this character would be the biggest bummer at a funeral like so mean but i mean so he's very much this millennial caricature in this movie and doesn't go much beyond that to the point to where it's the performance doesn't really save it the character's really not supposed to have that much charisma and he doesn't so charisma doesn't really save it that much (laughs) on the other end of it yeah, Samuel Jackson is also very much a caricature in this movie, more so than in the 2000 film that I remember. It's been 18, 19 years since I've seen it. Uh, he feels more of like kind of a two-dimensional caricature in this than in the other movie, okay. but at least it's one that I is entertaining. Like, yeah, he's being very rude and abrasive through the movie, but he's good at it. He makes it funny. Well, yeah. He makes it amusing. Like, I can get behind Samuel Jackson just being 100% Samuel Jackson yeah, in this film. Most definitely. Um, so, him, I, I, I didn't have that huge of an, of an issue with it in, in, this, in this movie. But th- there are scenes in the movie that do uh, uh, certainly work when it's not, you know, some of the characters being obnoxious. There are... There is a part where uh, um, they he, he the junior has a love interest in the movie, and they're telling him like uh, you know like you got to be more uh, you know grow a pair like don't be such a wuss um, show these people that you actually have a little bit of a spine. Then this gunfight breaks out in this club when he's on a date. I like this because it actually shows that. While this character is just kind of a, like, as always harping on shit all the time, to an obnoxious extent, it does show that he is, at the end of the day, an FBI, he's an FBI analyst, but he is still trained. Right. So, he does know how to fire guns, he spends the rest of the movie complaining about touching guns, but, like, he, it does show that he, in this firefight scene, he actually is good, he actually can, and it's playing, a. Uh, be my baby by the Ronettes during the scene. Like I, I like that. That was really well done. That was a cool scene. Okay. Uh, and he can fight too. Like in, in, in one scene he gets drunk and, and, and fights. Uh, some parts of that were working when, uh, the, when Richard Roundtree comes in, in 
near the climax of the movie. Uh, you know, that was fun seeing him and Samuel oh, together. Yeah. They work around because I was sitting there. He was calling him his dad. I was like, wasn't he his uncle in the 2000 movie? But they kind of like lampshade that a little bit. They go like, he's like, I'm fine with you now that you stop pretending to be my uncle or something like, well, I guess that gets around that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Regina Hall's in the movie, and she plays the mom, okay. and their back and forths are good with each other, her and Samuel Jackson. I can see that. Yeah, they, they, they work together really well. It's, it's one of those movies that almost feels like a pilot, or that, like, it would be a good sketch, like, uh, in the vein of, like, Son of Dolmite on Mad TV, where it's, like, it's Shaft, but his son is a dork. Like, you know, I, as a sketch, I could, maybe, I could see it working more so than this movie does, really. Even the soundtrack, like, I, I liked it when it played Be My Baby, and then at the beginning, when it plays a little of the Shaft theme. But other than that, a lot of the music wasn't very good in this movie. And if there's something you should never say about a Shaft movie is that the music's music bad. Good. Dude, this movie ends on this, like, remix that's awful. <laughs> like, just just play the theme. Dear God. I watched the original again recently. I hadn't seen it in maybe about ten years, but I watched it again recently for that episode, and it still holds up. Like, it's uh, it's a simple enough plot in the movie, but, like, between its style... Between just being this, like, uh, time capsule of New York then, right. like, with all the, like, you know, you see the porn theaters and everything on 42nd <laughs> Street in the oh. film. But between the, just how cool the character was and the soundtrack coming into, it's a fantastically edited movie. It's a movie that's certainly carried by style, by gravitas, by right. this performance from Richard Roundtree, which is exactly what it should be, and it still holds up in that regard. This movie, it's just, it, I mean, it's a rental. It's it's worth renting. It's it's not great. It does have moments in it that are funny. It's not a terrible movie. Like, I, I appreciated, I, I did appreciate it that it, it didn't pull a lot of punches with its jokes. Like, in a better way than a freaking movie like Loquisha <laughs> tried doing. Like, this movie is... It's trying to say something politically about differences between generations and different sensitivities, whereas a movie like Laquisha is like the drunk, annoying guy at a party decided to make his own movie. <laughs> oh, you gotta see that movie sometime, oh, man. God, no. If you care about it, I'm like, I don't think I need to see it at all. <laughs> Shaft 2019, even better than Loquisha. <laughs> Blowing review right there. Blowing. No, it's, I, I didn't think, I, I was the only one in this theater, by the way. And it was in one of the big screens in there. I just sat all the way in the back in this empty theater. Which, like, Which and makes me wonder, I'm like, did they think this was going to be like the big thing? Dude, like they this. only made, like, one trailer for this movie. Yeah. Like, they, Tim Story is the director of it. Um, and I don't know. Something about... There's only one trailer for it. Something about it seems to tell me, like, they're maybe not... The studio, like, maybe not expecting giant numbers out of this movie. Like, they're probably expecting... It'll probably do fine on video or streaming. Wow. Okay. Um, as for the movie theater, like... God, maybe they just threw it in there because it was the new movie. It was one of the new movies. I guess so, yeah. Men in Black was over in IMAX. Um, well, there might have been a couple non-IMAX screenings of that. But, yeah, I think there was. Um, but, okay, that's... You know, it. like I said, like there's some things about it that work, but there are some pretty obnoxious characters in the film. And... Uh, yeah, it it could have been a lot smarter than it is. It's a smart idea. It is. It's a smart idea. It's a clever idea. Done in a very by the numbers kind of bare bones way. But, you know, like I said, it was nice seeing Samuel Jackson back playing Shaft again. Right. And Richard Roundtree, of course. Uh, so I think we can. I don't think we have any other. Uh, oh, 
Thank you, uh, Mike Cochran, uh, for your uh, uh, super chat donation. Looks like that's the one we got here. Uh, so I think we just have late night left. So we'll get to late night and answer more super chat questions after that. Let me pull up the clip right here for late night, and we'll be right back. Hi, Catherine. Oh, Birdie, thank God. How's your baby? She's 27. I will say I was in a bad movie when I went to go see this film. <laughs> because I got there was a copyright strike last night on the channel. So some... It's since... Spoiler, it's since been resolved, as you can tell by the fact we're live streaming right now. Uh, so I had some... I saw all three movies last night, but I had some time between them to just stop by home for a little bit and uh, come home. This was the second movie I saw last night. So I come home between Men in Black and this and see like copyright strike. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> and it was on the the John Wick 3 dog's journey. Uh, Son is also a star. Okay. Uh, one. From some Estonian copyright company. I'm like, oh, it seems legit. <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> like yeah. no thank you. Right, it's like Link from Encino Man has gone on to be a copyright lawyer. So, uh, I was like, well, okay, let me put in the appeal on this. And I was, I spent the time here, like, submitting this retraction finding the website and writing to the email address on that and also the email address they provided me putting up a thing on twitter about it uh just to see if i could get some more information and then chatting with twitter about the thing i thought since this appears to be some third party copyright thing that i was gonna have to wait for it to time out right. but no it got resolved sometime last night huh. but Sometime in the middle of the night, it ended up getting resolved. So, uh, well, they had to wake up first. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about that. I was like, "What time is it over there?" <laughs> um, <coughs> so, anyway, the John Wick review is back up. So, but that I'm trying. I didn't to, like. Under what copyright strike could they f possibly think they can get away with something to do with music? I think, and I wrote and I said every clip I use is from the press kit. Like, like yeah. all the clips we use. They're from the press kits that are and, given. And definitely falls under fair use. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's not like you're showing, like, minute clips of the movies. Right. Like, this totally <laughs> oh, does. So I, so, I didn't know how soon it was going to be resolved. And, like, I wouldn't... If the strike was still there, I wouldn't be able to live stream. Right. And, uh... Um... So, I was in a bad mood when I went into late night. Like, alright, let me go see late night i hope i'm not like really unfair to this movie because i'm sitting there trying to think about this damn strike going on so this is the movie where mindy kaling is hired as a writer for a late night program that's this uh, very pop been going on for a couple of decades this late night talk show that's hosted by emma thompson after of course she retired from the men in black division <laughs> um <laughs> she mindy kaling comes into this uh writer's room is basically she she works at a she worked at a chemical plant and there was a contest at this chemical plant to meet any executive that you wanted i think within the company the parent company of this chemical plant is like a parent company of the of network, the network. Okay. so she used smarts to get it to get an interview to be a writer for this late night talk show and she's they say they they straight up say to her in the movie like yeah you're a diversity hire like they, they tell her that in the movie and, and where that comes into play is that this show that emma thompson hosts has been going on for about 20 some years and it's kind of hit a point where she's just sort of on autopilot on the show okay. she wants to interview people she actually respects and admires the the doris kearns goodwins of the world and people like that but she's competing against i you know jimmy fallon playing beer pong with the avengers like you know like late night shows that are designed to very much go viral so she's competing right. with that because of that they're 
forcing her out of her show. They're saying this is going to be the last year that you're doing this. So she wants to spice up. She wants to try to take this year and try to save this show. One of the things she wants to do to do that is to hire a female writer. uh, Is to hire a female writer on the show. And even though I went into this movie... In, in, in a piss mood, because like I said, I'm the stupid story, this yeah. Estonian company, what the hell? I actually really like the hell out of this movie. I, I hear, that's, yeah. I keep hearing that it's a, it's a good movie. I so enjoyed that's... it, like, I, I really dug it, and really quickly, any thought I had about this stupid strike thing going on with the John Wick, it went away pretty quick, because I was, I got sucked into this pretty easily. I One thing that I really like about this movie is... Uh, it feels incredibly authentic. It is this is a movie? Mindy Kaling also wrote the film. This is a okay. movie that feels like it's written from someone who has genuine experience working in television and working in writers' rooms. And because of that, there's not really anything very two dimensional about any of the characters in the movie. Okay. Yeah, she is hired as like this diversity hire who they tell her in the movie, and she's like, "What?" And they're like, "Well, what do you want us to say?" <laughs> Like, Look at you. What do you expect? <laughs> so it's it's a very honest film. Like it's when she goes into this writers' room. Yeah, it's a writers' room full of a bunch of guys. It's a boys' club. Yeah. But it's not like when we went to go see what men want, and they're oh, yeah. sitting there just throwing footballs across Characters, the room or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, the movie deals heavily in narcissism, in ego, in a boys' club writers' room, certainly. But it does it genuinely. These are all real characters. They have flaws, yeah, like between characters that are there for nepotism and also some that have, you know, not the best dating life in the world or others that are certainly narcissistic, clashing egos, sure. But it's right. not written as a cartoon. It's written like th- these. all these people feel like they exist. This feels like a really real film. And even from from her, from the character she plays, she goes into this, this character Molly that she plays, she goes into this job thinking probably like it would be some dumb movie where she's going in there as this, who's going to be this savior of the show because she's the first woman hired to be a writer. Right. When that's really not the case, she sits down and... She sits down and is doesn't really have any ideas. She has a list of things she think is wrong with the show, but no actual jokes or ideas to take to get the it place out of, of that. Right. So she struggles at first to the point to where, you know, she the the character that uh um Emma Thompson plays in the film is a very like um uh, it's like a Devil Wears Prada kind of thing, but as a talk show host, not as like not, not like as, evil yeah. by any means, uh, but very much a hard ass, like uh, a very <laughs> definitely says what this person thinks, especially if the especially if she doesn't like the person she's talking to. So, you know, she comes in there and kind of is kind of yelled at a little bit, and then runs off, is hiding under the desk, crying. One of the other writers straight up says, like, look, you gotta suck it up. Like, you know, this this is the real world. Like, yeah, you're kind of coming in here with these philosophies that you got going on, but you're not gonna survive if you're doing that. Like, you gotta just kind of grow a pair a little bit, and you can't really be making any mortal enemies here. You can have people that you have issues. This is later, a character tells her this, but, like, you can have issues with people, certainly, but you, we all just kind of got to deal with each other. Like, right. they, they, I one thing I like too is that they talk about how when Emma Thompson comes in and is uh, actually sitting in on the writers' room because she's trying to save this show. A lot of the writers are talking about how this is the first time they've met her. Like how oh, she shit. just doesn't go in there. Like right. uh, how she, you know, the monologue writer does his thing, gives it to this person, they all work together to write the show, that's handed off to the producers and the host and everything, so a lot of them are shocked to actually meet this person for the first time, who have maybe been working there for about ten years. Um, I like how they're all really given um, their own stories. You certainly have Mindy Kalings, you also have 
her the host and also her husband John Lithgow who's going through John Lithgow's character who's going through Parkinson's in the film. Okay. And you have her clashing with the network and the studio executive played by uh, Amy Ryan. And there's also Ike Barinholtz is in this movie doing his Dane Cook. <laughs> he's not playing like he's not called Dane Cook, but he's playing like he's that. He's being Dane, yeah. He's Dane Cook. He's character. the person who they're trying to have uh, okay. replace her on the show. <laughs> um, he's fun in the film. I like that the movie doesn't really have villains necessarily. Like it has people that aren't good people by any means but they feel like people they are three-dimensional characters right. there's no just straight out two-dimensional villain in the movie it, it feels like these people all exist in real life um i like that uh uh again the, the stories that have to do a lot of characters are certainly given arcs in the movie like mindy kaling certainly right emma thompson definitely who through the course of the movie just kind of learns to be a better boss i mean it's the movie's not without its flaws like i mean there is uh there is like a big thing that happens about uh maybe two-thirds into the movie uh there's a writer in the movie who's played by uh hugh uh dancy um he's very good in the movie like He's a character who starts out being kind of charming, and then you find out, oh, this guy's actually got some issues. Um, there's a kind of a big thing that happens towards the last act of the movie that's pretty important to his character. There, his character has a big part of this thing that happens, and he's just kind of disappeared from the film after a while. I don't know if some stuff was left on the cutting room floor or something like that. But he's just kind of gone from this movie at one point out, where yeah. he should have been there in some capacity a little bit given given what happens later on in, in the movie. So there were things like that, sure. But uh, it was... <laughs> um, Emma Thompson steals this movie. Like, she is. She is phenomenal in this film. She... Uh, she's great as this host. She feels like this feels like this certainly feels like a show that would exist and that she would be looked upon as like this, uh, icon of late night talk shows. There's, uh, there's even a good part too, where she goes in and actually tries doing stand up at one point coming in, like sort of with an ego that like, I'm going to do great. Cause I am right. who I am. And at first, she has a couple jokes that don't land like at all and then starts opening up and actually talking about herself and her own issues and things like that and then warms the crowd over there's there's really good things like that i mean she really is as an actress she really is a treasure like <laughs> she is oh most definitely especially because i've even ever since i was a kid i was felt she looked a little like my mom yeah, <laughs> you can see yeah. it, right? <laughs> yeah, I definitely can. Yeah. So, like in this, I'm like, oh, it's, it's my mom got a talk show, right on. That's cool. <laughs> um, no, she she's she deserves like a supporting actress nomination for this. She's phenomenal in this movie. She steals every scene that she's in. Like she comes in like she easily could have been just like this two dimensional, just hard ass through this thing. This like. You know, like a late night version of Ebenezer Scrooge or something. But, like, she really... She really does make you feel for this character. As much as she is abusing her employees. Like, just assigning them numbers and not names and things like that. As much as she is just letting her employees have it every single day. She's so great because you do feel for this this character. Right. Like, between what she's got kind of going on, her relationship with her husband... Also, that she's kind of being forced out by this network, and also just what she has to deal with with this network, like trying to dumb down her show and things like that. It's like, yeah, man, right. I get why this character is like she is. I understand. Um, I enjoyed it. I of the three movies, it was by far and away the best one I saw. It sounds last like night. yeah, from what you've been describing and what I've been reading, it seems like it's yeah. It's worth it. It 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 totally is. It it was funny. It was really touching in some scenes, like even. There's some parts towards the end where even I was starting to get choked up a little watching this film. I really loved it. I, I, I did. I It's, as far as stuff that's been made 
revolving around like late night television. It was one of the best side scenes of its kind since remember the late shift. Uh, oh, okay. The one about the uh, Leno Letterman right. Tonight Show thing. Uh, it was one of the best of its kind I'd seen since since that. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed. It. I, I I highly recommend this movie. Uh, so let's stick. A... <coughs> Give us your final thought on this movie that you didn't see. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like I'm going to have to go see it. That's what it sounds like. So, and I mean, it's better than I, Shaft. It's better than Men in Black. I'll tell you what, it'd be nice to see a better Emma Thompson movie to end the week. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's was, it was a better Emma Thompson one. movie. You could be going uh, to see this weekend. Nice. <laughs> um, oh, but, all right, let's get to the remaining super chat, which I think is just. Um, Thank you. So it looks like we just have one here from uh, Troy Thomas. Thank you so much, uh, Troy, for the donation. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks a ton, everyone, for the super chats. I'll keep that up here in a little bit. I'm, I'm so going to crash here in a little bit. <laughs> Damn. Uh, let me throw up. Uh, yeah, let me throw up. <laughs> throw up and throw up. <laughs> It's gonna. I always thought it would be on Brad tries, you, but apparently it's on. It's on. I'll this let you show. decide which order you want to do that in too. That's... <laughs> that just sounds like something I would do to just like mess with Laura if she'd be reviewing a movie with me. You <laughs> don't mind me, honey. You want to take this review from here? You got this right. Okay. You're you good. got this. You got this, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I think it would be on this show where I got sick. Um, okay, let's uh, put a throw up the subscription thing. Subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash Stone Gremlin Productions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob, Facebook.com slash The Cinema Snob, and on Instagram at The Cinema Snob as well. And I believe next weekend is. Uh, well, I'm going to be at Planet Funk Con next weekend, but eventually I'll see those movies. It's uh, you say Quad Cities represent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Toy Story Four and Child's Play, so that'll be a great double feature when I come back. Ooh, that, <laughs> All <be> right. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next weekend. Bye.